At the beginning, obtain the projection of the heavens, the first world, and conquer the Kanto region just as Lin Fong was planning to settle down and become a master of two realms, he suddenly realized that this person who ventured into the Kanto world seemed different from what he had seen in his TV dramas not wanting to be a wealthy man enjoying happiness. Lin Fong chose to take a more arduous path the physical body is a boat in the sea of suffering, and the soul is a sail in the sea of suffering. Only by reaching the extreme can they reach the other shore of the first world. Late Qing Dynasty and Early Republic of China Keywords of the Novel Zhu Tian starts from outside the Great Qing Pass without pop-ups, Zhu Tian starts from outside the Great Qing Pass to download the complete text, and Zhu Tian starts from outside the Great Qing Pass to read the latest chapters. Chapter 1 The Projection of the Heavens, Brothers Who Died You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 The Projection of the Heavens, Brothers Who Died in the Late Qing Dynasty Outside the border. The refugees are like a tide. Looking down from the sky, a grey long dragon emerged from Shanhaiguan on a snowy road, winding towards the northeast. A large number of Shandong and Hunan people who couldn't survive risked their lives to migrate towards the outside of the pass in order to survive. This road is called Chuang Kanto. On the way to the Kanto region, bandits, refugees, human teeth, officials, and others were grinding their teeth and sucking blood. Horse bandits and human traffickers rode high-headed horses, holding whips and jokingly pointing at the refugee crowd, waiting to eat people. Surrounding this long dragon are countless red-eyed predators. Countless refugees fell on the road, becoming starving victims. Wild wolves and dogs were eating their stomachs full of fat on the road, with red eyes shining. They were drooling as they looked at the still alive person, follow those refugees and wait for them to stumble on the road, enjoying their food. Seeing someone staggering to the ground, these wolves and dogs rushed forward and bit through the person's trachea and blood vessels, splattering blood and steaming heat. The rest of the people watched all of this with numbness. Their eyes were dull. It seems that the death of those around us has nothing to do with them. Because in the next moment, the deceased may be themselves. As for the person riding a tall horse, watching this scene, not only will they not pay attention, but they will also whistle if something happens. This can also be considered a rare happy moment for them on this tedious business journey. This can also be considered a lively event. These people are like the ancient Roman Colosseum, watching the gladiators being eaten by lions and cheering the audience on bloody scenes, all in one mood. Despair and coldness are the main tone of the journey through Kanto. Until one day during the Guangxu period. Outside the border. Buffalo Gully. Nine o'clock in the morning. With the last howl of the wolf disappearing, Lin Fong finally took a long breath, and the engineering shovel in his hand was stained with blood and fell to the ground. His eyebrows and forehead were covered in frost. During the tense and thrilling battle just now, Lin Fong was sweating profusely. A large amount of sweat evaporated from him like smoke. He carried a crossbow and an engineering shovel in his hand, and had already cut off the stomachs and hind legs of the last three wolves. The rest of the wolf pack finally stopped insisting and retreated. Lin Fong also leaned against the tree, panting heavily. He carried a large box and some packages on his back but judging from the material of the box, it didn't seem like a creation from this world. These wolves collapsed weakly on the ground, all dead. Lin Fong then turned his head to look at the people behind him. Behind him were several people who had previously fought against the wolf pack, but now they are all adorned with decorations. Two of these leaders are particularly prominent. These two people are both young people, one holding a big knife and the other holding iron eagle claws. The young man holding a large knife was somewhat powerless and supported by the iron eagle claws behind him. The iron eagle claws behind him are not much better. He was bitten by a wild wolf and injured his thigh. If it weren't for Lin Fong appearing and saving them, these two people might have fallen into the wolf pack's mouth today. The few brothers behind them all had injuries on their bodies, 
and most importantly, they had already lost their fighting power. If it weren't for Lin Fong appearing in the mouth of the wild wolf, they wouldn't have had a good life. It's truly a chaotic world. Lin Fong muttered to himself, in broad daylight, this wolf eats too many people and has become wild. When he sees a group of strong men, these wolves dare not hide and dare to launch attacks in broad daylight. What kind of world is this? Lin Fong sighed. He had just arrived in this world and saw this scene, which was quite impactful. Having just arrived in an unfamiliar world, he saw a wild wolf besieging someone. Before he could determine whether to save them, he saw a young man using a large knife feeling somewhat powerless. This person seemed to have been fighting fiercely for a long time and was on the verge of defeat. The young man behind him roared with eagle claws, third brother. You step back, I'll come. Immediately after, the person rushed out and shouted, I'm He Laosi fighting with you. The person named He Laosi rushed out, and the person with the big knife also shouted loudly, Laosi, get out of here. I, Zhu Kai Shan, haven't died yet. It's not your turn to be a hero. Step back from me. When Lin Fong heard the names of these two people, he suddenly frowned and grabbed the engineering shovel. Zhu Kai Shan. He Laosi. When he saw the white snow again and thought of world time, he immediately thought of the TV drama he had watched, Adventure in Kanto. Isn't there Zhu Kai Shan and He Laosi among the adventurers in the Kanto region? The TV drama, Chuang Guan Dong, refers to the small figures in the Big Era, and the history of the Zhu family's foray into Guangdong is also a microcosm of the population of that era. One of the most outstanding characters here is played by the group leader, Ah, no, it's the head of the old Zhu family in the TV drama, Zhu Kaishan. Emotional and righteous, deep affection for family and country. In earlier years, Zhu Kaishan engaged in martial arts in Jili and was wanted to go outside the border. Later, he made a career in northeast China and left again due to the war. The family feud and changes in times are all condensed into the changes in this family. Did he see the characters who were breaking through the Kanto region as soon as he started projecting? Thinking of this, Lin Fong glanced at the person holding the big knife again. Hi, there was a shadow in his heart. Upon closer inspection, the person holding the big knife was really a handsome young man from all over the country. This person really has tiger eyes and square mouth, and looks like a hero. Some resemble Zhu Kaishan in his mind. It's just that the timing doesn't quite match. After all, at the beginning of his journey through Kanto, He Laosi had already died. Now it looks like Zhu Kaishan and He Laosi just arrived outside the pass. Did he come early? Now is the time for Zhu Kaishan and his brother He Laosi to go to Kanto with their people. Finger pinching calculation can also match. Did he come to the world of exploring Kanto? Seeing the fierce wolf pack in front of him, Lin Fong hesitated for a moment and decided to rush over to save the person. If the two people in front of me were really He Laosi and Zhu Kai Shan, saving them would be beneficial and harmless. These two are both loyal heroes, as the saying goes, one hero has three helpers. He came here without many trustworthy people around him, and he couldn't achieve great things. Lin Fong traveled here through the projection of the heavens. The projection he first came to was in the late Qin dynasty. Projection is the shadow left by a certain world in time and space. Everything here is real, but one thing is that what is done in the projection does not affect the reality that has already been completed. That's why it's called the projection of the heavens. The projection of the heavens opens the door every 30 days. This is the first time Lin Fong has arrived at the end of the Qin dynasty, and he has brought many good things with him, intending to explore the way. Inside the large package behind him, there were a large amount of silver dollars, gold bars, and pounds. The ocean is newly pressed by machines, and the alloy is even more conscientious than the materials used in the current ocean. The only problem is that if Zhu Kaishan had just arrived outside the pass, his silver dollar with Yuan Datu printed on it might have been a bit ahead of schedule. Fortunately, 
This silver dollar is also a solid material, and if it is hard to spend, it is not unusable. After all, there are now over 20 types of Guangxu silver coins alone. The big guy spends money, and what he spends is the silver content in it. Besides, silver won't do, Lin Feng still has pounds. The pound is real. Lin Feng bought it from a foreign country. It is exactly the same as the pound printed in the time and space printing machine. But the most important thing is still the medicine inside his package. Whether it's anti-inflammatory drugs or topical drugs for treating knife wounds, they are all more precious than gold. In this era, every disclosure of these things can trigger a local war. Lin Feng had a plan for coming this time. He came here with no intention of using medication to clear the way. He bought a lot of hard jade bracelets, ranging from tens to hundreds. There are more than ten in total. In addition, he also prepared the divine medicine, golden rooster cream. Jinji Nas Huang, also known as Quinine, was a true divine medicine in the late Qing dynasty. Quinine can treat malaria, commonly known as Shuizi. Jinji Nas Huang, placed in the late Qing dynasty, is even more precious than gold of the same weight. With this item, it is equivalent to having a continuous source of wealth. With this item, Lin Feng also considered it. Jinji Nas Huang is also a popular medicine that can be traced back to the late Qing dynasty. When others ask, that's Nanyang Divine Medicine. However, Lin Feng also knew that he came to the end of the Qing dynasty and was not in a hurry to sell medicine. The first thing I do here is to find a backup. Live first, then get rich. Otherwise, he wouldn't dare to take it out and sell it. Selling Jinji Nas Huang, take it out today, and tomorrow he will be eaten and wiped clean. As for why Lin Feng didn't take out the anti-inflammatory drugs. Joking, he took out anti-inflammatory drugs and was exposed to the mysteries, which made Lin Feng miserable. Even the Heavenly King and Laozi cannot keep him. Lin Feng is deeply aware of the importance of anti-inflammatory drugs. As long as this medicine is shipped out, even if the Emperor comes, his life cannot be saved. So he unpacked the anti-inflammatory drugs and put them in a white cardboard box, leaving them as life-saving items for himself. When he arrived at the end of the Qing dynasty and found himself outside the pass, Lin Feng's mind immediately became vivid. At this moment, it is not an exaggeration to say it is a wolf's den outside the pass. As long as it's a mountain here, there are bandits. As long as it's an official, they dare to eat people. Lin Feng immediately extinguished his intention to sell the medicine. Wealth is not revealed. If he were alone and dared to take out the good things in his hands, he would be torn apart by wolves the next day. Here, if you want to survive, you need a group of people. A group of people can do great things. Zhu Kaishan, He Laosi, these are not iron brothers. The team was given by heaven. Joining hands and doing things with others inevitably leads to being stabbed in the back. But with Zhu Kaishan and He Laosi, as long as there is a lifelong friendship, it is a lifelong brother. This can be seen from the fact that Zhu Kaishan died inexplicably because his brother He Laosi was killed. Old Zhu went alone to investigate the gold mine and avenged his brother. Zhu Lao San and He Lao Si both have a strong sense of heroism. Being brothers with them is not a disadvantage. As long as he is brothers with Zhu Kaishan and He Lao Si, with some help, give him some time, and he can stand firm outside the pass. Only when his life's safety is guaranteed can Lin Feng have the mood to bring good things from modern times and do something good. Fortunately, before coming over, Lin Feng had anticipated that he would freeze to death here if he wore thick clothes. Lin Feng had a very simple idea at the time, going back and forth every thirty days was better than nothing. He wears too much, so he can take some food and water. If it gets too hot, he can throw it away. It's better than not having something when needed. As a result, this caution came in handy and saved him a small life. Lin Feng eliminated the remaining wolves and looked towards Zhu Kaishan and He Laosi. 
Zhu Kaishan felt a bit powerless, but when he saw Lin Feng turn his head, he still threw away his big knife and plopped to his knees, saying, Thank you for your help. Lin Feng was startled. He Laosi saw Zhu Kaishan kneeling and without saying a word, he also knelt on the ground. Thank you for your help. Seeing the third and fourth masters all kneeling, the few people behind them kneel faster. Thank you for your help. These people all spoke in unison, knocking their heads down. Lin Feng didn't expect these people to kneel so crisply and neatly. A few, get up first. The ground is cold. Lin Feng stepped forward and helped these people up. He had originally planned to spread his tongue and talk to them well, going along with them, and using some means to get closer to them. Unexpectedly, as soon as he turned his head, Zhu Kaishan and He Laosi knelt down on the ground without hesitation. Lin Feng is numb. No, big brother, the man has gold under his knees. Are you kneeling too fast? End of this chapter. Chapter 2 The first arrival of Treasure Land, Old Zhu worried. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 The first arrival of Treasure Land, Old Zhu worried after all, Lin Feng finally pulled these heroes up from the ground. Let's get up first. The ground is too cold. Don't let me rescue you from the wolf's mouth. Turn your head and freeze to death in this place. Isn't it for nothing that I saved someone? Lin Feng pulled up Zhu Kaishan, and Zhu Kaishan was immensely grateful to Lin Feng. The De Dao Zhu Kaishan mixed fist troop relies on benevolence and righteousness. He is not the most powerful among the martial arts troops, but he is the most benevolent and righteous among them. Benevolence and righteousness, benevolence comes before righteousness comes after. As long as you are wandering the rivers and lakes, who doesn't know the fame of the Dao Zhu Kaishan? Who doesn't know that Master Zhu has unparalleled ambition? Zhu Kaishan was not killed by foreigners this time because when Zhu Kaishan and his brothers were fighting, they discovered that many people were lurking in the martial arts troop. To be precise, a group of scum has infiltrated. Young and energetic Zhu Kaishan doesn't rub sand in his eyes. He is punching to hit foreigners, to protect the people, not to harm the people. Seeing that the boxing troop had deteriorated, he angrily withdrew from the troop, but managed to save his life. The martial arts troop claimed that they were invincible, but it's not true that they were invincible. Later on, the martial arts troop engaged in both internal and external attacks. The foreign guns and cannons of foreigners, as well as the expert experts sent by the old Buddha, kill people like wildfire. Under the encirclement of the earth and sky, most of the skilled fighters in the martial arts troop died. The old Buddha continued to suppress the martial arts troops, and even sent out the top experts in the palace to strangle the leaders of these troops as a warning to others. Among them, Zhu Kaishan ranks first on the bounty list with his unique personality charm. Those who were rewarded by the court along with him were all famous figures, such as the Yellow Lotus Holy Mother, the Red Lantern Holy Sister, and the senior martial brothers of the martial arts troupe. There is not an unknown person. Helpless, Zhu Kaishan could only travel far away from the Kanto region with his brothers and dared not go home. Who knew that I almost lost my life in Kanto? Our benefactor saved us, and we owe our benefactor one life. As long as the benefactor speaks up, I congratulate Lao Si for his life. The benefactor can take it at any time. Helping someone up, he Lao Si stood next to Lin Feng, patting his chest and reassuring. The leather hat covered half of his face, and Lin Feng didn't know what expression he Lao Si had on his face when he said these words. However, in this case, Lin Feng listened a lot. For a moment, he didn't know whether what he Lao Si said was true or false. He doesn't think it's quite true. After all, when he used to lend money to people, their words were even more sincere, but when it came to repaying the money, that kind of arrogance had long fallen somewhere. However, Lin Feng realized that he was venturing into the Kanto world here, and what he guaranteed was still he Laosi from this passionate boxing group. 
Lin Fong dare not say whether what he said is true or false. After all, while venturing into the Kanto world, Hu Zizhen and Sanjiang fell to the front in order to save the life of the old Ju family. What he Laosi said may be true. But it's okay, Lin Fong didn't expect to save their lives, they really gave up on themselves. This is the first time we've met, love is everywhere. As he Laosi spoke to Lin Fong, Zhu Kaishan remained silent and carefully scrutinized Lin Fong. Zhu Kaishan has been wandering the world for many years, and he has seen countless people with just one pair of eyes. He glanced at Lin Feng's background and could tell three points. At first glance, Zhu Kaishan felt that this person might be a wealthy young master from any family. It's really not possible, even those who have studied abroad may have the chance. Anyway, this family is definitely not short of money. If they are short of money, this young master won't be able to grow this big guy either. More importantly, his hands have calluses left over from practicing archery. Is it difficult to determine which family's young master it is? It's abnormal for such a person to appear alone in the wilderness. Zhu Kaishan couldn't figure out where this life-saving benefactor came from for a moment. Is it the noble young master who ran away from home, or is it the master who came to catch them? It's better not to be from any particular family, Bell. He Lao Zhu and these people are incompatible. I'm not sure about the situation, and it's hard for Zhu Kaishan to say anything, but we still need to thank him. Before Zhu Kaishan could speak, Lin Feng generously waved his hand and said, who doesn't have a difficult time going out. Today's matter is just a piece of cake. Speaking of which, I have some things I need your help with. I came to Baudi for the first time, and I am not familiar with the place. Do you know where there is a town near here? I, as a person, am also afraid of encountering villains and wolf packs. How about I go with you and rest in a nearby town, no problem. He Laosi patted his chest again to promise, without even thinking about it. As a result, Zhu Kaishan caught his brother in one go. He Laosi turned his face and was somewhat surprised. Zhu Kaishan gave a hee hee smile, revealing a signature and honest smile. Just now, he pondered for a while and decided to explain the origins of these people clearly. When he said this, there was a hint of probing the people in front of him, and of course, there was also a sense of protecting him. They are being pursued. If the benefactor does not know their origins and is implicated by the pursuing expert, and something happens, Zhu Kaishan's heart will not be at ease. So seeing that he Laosi was full of promises, Zhu Kaishan pulled his brother. Before he Laosi could understand the situation, he saw Zhu Kaishan clasping his fists and saying, My benefactor, we can send our benefactor to the nearest town without any problem. After arriving in the town, the benefactor needs to leave on their own. Don't worry, benefactor, it's not that we are ungrateful. It's really us people who hang a head bounty on the city gate tower. There is also an old eunuch chasing behind the scenes. If caught by those old eunuchs, the benefactor may also be implicated by us. To be honest, we are all on the reward list of the court. We are the ones who fight. Do not change your name while going down, do not change your surname while sitting down, and use the big sword Zhu Kaishan. This is my brother, Eagle Claw He Laosi. Zhu Kaishan said these words, his eyes fixed on Lin Feng, wanting to see his reaction. He Laosi thought of his identity and remained silent. San Gu is right. Those old eunuchs are all vicious and ruthless, and they kill invisibly. Carrying a benefactor did indeed harm him. Who knew that Lin Feng didn't react at all when he heard these words? It's not something he already knows, what reaction should he have? No, Lin Feng doesn't think he can really have no reaction either. He shook his head and sneered, Oh, I thought you guys had some difficulties. Is that all? If it's just this, then you underestimate me. I thought you were bandits who robbed homes, but as a result, you are a martial arts group wanted by the court. If you don't say it, I'll just leave alone, but if you want to say it, I'm Lin, and I'll go with you. 
I love heroes the most. You people don't have to think that I have misunderstood you either. I, the common people of the Qin dynasty, have been starving all year round, tightening my belts to pay taxes to the officials. Those officials cannot even protect the people, forcing you to pick up hoes and face foreign guns and artillery. The result is here, I'll finish grinding and kill the donkey, and I'll still chase after you. What face do these people have to arrest you? Let me put it this way, I still don't appreciate your bounty. I saved you guys because I saw that you guys have a deep brotherly relationship and can be close friends. As for the experts in the industry, why don't you call them here? I want to see how powerful this expert is. Lin Fong didn't boast. I'm really not afraid of so dot called experts in the industry. Times have changed, adults. Seven steps away, the gun is fast. Within seven steps, the gun is fast and accurate. As long as he leaves here, what can't he buy with his wealth, whether it's a foreign gun or a mining detonator? As long as you buy it, not to mention a few old eunuchs, even if you are a skilled martial artist from the inner family, you will be shot to death. More importantly, he didn't come here without anything on him. He has a silent crossbow on his body, which was pressed out by his machine tool. Within twenty steps, even if this old eunuch is wearing the protective armor of his ancestors, he will still drink hatred. Inside his big box is a composite bow, weighing eighty pounds, with sealed strings and carbon arrows. If the eunuch dares to come, Lin Fong dares to shoot through the opponent's head with a bow and arrow. As the saying goes, within seven steps, the archer is both fast and fast. Not to mention, there are explosives in Lin Feng's package. He is a master in the industry, invincible to knives and guns, unable to even kill him with explosives. Lin Feng doesn't believe it. For over three years, he has been practicing archery with strength all over his body. Apart from not seeing blood directly, he may not be worse than the others. Ancient archers, their whole body is covered in muscles. If it weren't for him exercising since childhood, in three years, he wouldn't have developed a qualified archer. Lin Fong said this from the bottom of his heart, with a soaring spirit. The strong self-confidence contained within it even stunned Zhu Kaishan for a moment. The words of this benefactor don't sound like a joke either. He really thinks so. Just as he was speaking, Lin Fong pointed to He Laosi's thigh and asked, You've said so much, don't your thighs hurt? As soon as the excitement passed, He Laosi realized it later and let out a painful, ouch. These damn wolves. One day, I'll skin you all. He Laosi cursed fiercely. After being interrupted by He Laosi, the atmosphere here suddenly eased. Upon seeing this, Zhu Kaishan called on his brothers to stand up and He Laosi said, Okay, that benefactor, let's go. The closest place to here is the Buffalo Gully. We need to go to the Buffalo Valley at dawn, otherwise there will be bears in the mountains at night. Besides, I heard there have been too many deaths recently, haunted by ghosts and zombies. At night, the mountain is not peaceful enough. We must go to the Buffalo Valley before it gets dark, otherwise something will happen Lin Fong stopped them from calling him his benefactor, and as he watched old Zhu calling him one benefactor after another, it made him feel uneasy and even less able to bring him closer. Hey, Zhu Sangu, don't be my benefactor. I'm not familiar with it. Okay, I'm younger than you guys. Just call me Brother Lin. Zhu Kaishan still had to decline, but he Laosi, who was standing on his shoulder, slapped him and said, Third brother, why are you so motherly now? Brother Lin has saved our lives, so that's his own person. Is it difficult for us to have no time to repay the kindness along the way? Brother Lin doesn't like others to call him a benefactor, so let's not call him a benefactor. Look at you. Zhu Kaishan couldn't help but smile when he saw his promiscuous brother say so. Okay, Lin brothers, let's go. Zhu Kaishan didn't have time to rest. He took his brothers with great strides and left here. The smell of blood here made it uncertain what would attract him later. Lin Fong also left with this group of people. 
However, Lin Fong didn't take the sneaky and zombie things Zhu Kaishan mentioned to heart. Are you superstitious? It's normal to have it at this time. But there are zombies inside the Kanto Pass. Are you joking? You teased me, Lin Fong. I haven't watched any TV dramas. In the main drama, the saying of where the zombies come from is unexpected, as Zhu Kaishan is afraid of ghosts and gods. Not bad, in this world, the characters are quite full. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Just emerging from the wolf's mouth and entering the tiger's nest. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Just emerging from the wolf's mouth and entering the tiger's nest walking on the road, Lin Fong glanced at Zhu Kaishan's accomplished big sword. Zhu Kaishan's big sword has cut off the necks of countless people and the spines of many wild beasts. Currently, it seems that his knife's lifespan is not long. Lao Zhu's knife has notches and some rust on it, and no one knows when it will break. Fist making people, poor people living in poverty, those so dot called precious swords are all the things of the rich, and the poor cannot play with them. Poor people just have a knife. It's just a precious knife, without years of maintenance, it will rust and be discarded. Zhu Kaishan didn't have so much silver money. By chance, he obtained a precious sword and took great care of it along the way. His sword, I don't know which unlucky soldier Ding snatched it from. It looks like a goose feather sword, and it's almost worn out. Brother Zhu, I don't think your big knife works. Lin Fong took the initiative to say, here, I'll take this one and make it work for you. Later, I'll get you a good knife. Lin Fong generously handed the engineering shovel in his hand to Zhu Kaishan. A good horse with a good saddle. On the road ahead, who knows what dangers will be encountered. Ask Zhu Kaishan to hold this engineering shovel, which can also increase combat effectiveness and protect their safety. Lin Fong still has explosives and a silent crossbow in his hand which is really not good. He also has a composite bow. Which weapon is better than an engineering shovel? Zhu Kaishan looked at the engineer shovel and didn't dare to take it over. During the battle just now, he also saw that this shovel was indeed a good thing. This blade, this level of toughness, can hardly be called a precious sword. This is also very normal. With the continuous development of modern material science, today's handicraft swords and knives are safe and valuable in ancient times. Even kitchen knives and bone-cutting knives are treasures. It is a treasure sword that was placed in ancient times and can be mass-produced, invincible. Is there a precious sword in ancient times? Have is it much or not? Rare things are precious, but with too many, can they be called precious swords? It is because of its scarcity that it is called a precious sword, which is why it is so precious and has become a family heirloom. But now, the so dot called treasure sword in ancient times can be given to each of them by Lin Fong when he returns to modern times. If he is willing to spend a lot of money, he can really find a factory and make good knives that can cut iron like mud. He doesn't want any ancient swordsmanship. What he wants is a modern assembly line. These swords and knives are enough to shock the so dot called wealthy guests in the martial arts world. Upon hearing that Lin Fong wanted to give him this thing, Zhu Kaishan repeatedly refused, sincerely. No, oh, really no. This thing is too precious, I, old Zhu, cannot take it. Brother Lin, for the first time we meet, we will not receive any rewards without merit. I can't bear your generous gift. To be honest, Zhu Kaishan likes this divine weapon and sharp blade, but he also knows that this is the first time we meet, how dare he take such precious things from others. He didn't know yet that such things were countless in the basement of Lin Fong Villa. For Lin Fong, this thing is not a treasure at all. Lin Fong pretended to be displeased and said, Hey, what are you saying, Brother Zhu? You're going to see the truth. We hit it off at first sight. What's wrong with giving you something? The road ahead is still long, hold this thing, even if it's something I lent you. Brother Zhu must be holding this thing, 
and he won't care about me, will he? Zhu Kaishan still has to decline. He Laosi laughed heartily on the side and patted Zhu Kaishan, saying, Third brother, Brother Lin said that, you can take it. Brother Lin saved our lives, we must repay him no matter what. The grace of saving lives is greater than heaven. Take Lin's weapon and protect his safety, won't you? What are you doing, such a motherly woman? You weren't such a damn person before. After he Laosi finished speaking, Zhu Kaishan saw that Lin Feng's actions were extremely resolute and there was no intention of turning around, so he no longer declined. He happily took the engineering shovel, wiped it with snow, and then used his sleeve to wipe it more carefully, occasionally exhaling a breath on it. It can be seen that he can't let go of this thing. Warriors, there's no one who doesn't like weapons. The rest of the people looked at Zhu Kaishan with envy, and no one dared to compete with him. He Laosi looked at his third brother and chuckled a few more words, wanting to say a few more jerky things, but before he could speak, he suddenly fell to the sky. He fell off guard, even Lin Fong was startled. Old four, old four. Zhu Kaishan was also startled. He rushed over and pulled off He Laosi's hat. With a touch, his face changed greatly and he sat down on the ground, as if all his strength had been drained from him. This good man, who is brave enough to fight against wolf packs, is now as white as paper. It's broken, it's broken. Old C has a fever. Zhu Kaishan has seen this scene before. When there was a fight, only a few members of the boxing troop were actually killed by swords and foreign spears. Most of these injured people died from fever and suppuration later on. That's just a complication. Zhu Kaishan still remembers that time when he felt powerless and could only watch his brother die in front of him. Seeing his good brother also following in the footsteps, Zhu Kaishan's eyes turned red. It must be a bite. Zhu Kaishan tore open He Laosi's pants like a madman and saw the wound on his thigh. At a glance, Zhu Kaishan no longer had the strength to sit on the ground, looking dejected. Done. He Laosi is done. His wound was even deeper than imagined, and it seemed to be purulent. After purulent discharge, the fourth son had a high fever that did not subside and his life was not long. His brother, it's going to be gone. Zhu Kaishan took a long breath, but there was no sound. Tears rolled down his eyes. He Laosi is still somewhat rational. He held up a face that was burned red, barely showing a bitter smile, and cursed as he opened his mouth. Third brother, don't be sad, isn't it just death? When he Laosi followed you into the martial arts troupe, he already thought about death. Is that him? He's really cowardly. The foreign demon didn't kill me, the clear demon didn't kill me, in the end, I was bitten to death by a wolf. What a bad luck. Third brother, I'm dead. Don't bury me, it's in vain. You just leave me in this mountain ditch and let the wolf eat me, which is also considered clean. I am clean until I die, and I did not harm my brothers with the group of demons in the martial arts troupe. Also, Brother Lin, I owe you my life. It seems like I won't be able to make it in this lifetime. In the next life, I will repay your kindness and treat you like a cow or a horse. When the time comes, you must recognize me and work on your family's farmland. You must be kind to me. At least make me eat enough. He Laosi seemed to say his last words, his voice getting lower and lower. Zhu Kaishan slapped He Laosi in the face and couldn't help but stare at him, saying, I told you not to talk nonsense. Die. I'm still here, how can I tell you to die? Today, even if I carry you on my back, I will still take you to the town to find a Dr. Lin Fong calmly watched from the side. In front of him, there was a scene of deep brotherly affection. However, Lin Fong knew that He Laosi's injury was not completely incurable. If he had acted, He Laosi would still have a chance. At least this strong martial arts practitioner could have survived this deadly level with his strong physique. Watching He Laosi say his last words, Lin Fong finally untied the package and said, That's not possible. 
you owe me this life, so pay it back now. I have never believed in religion in my life, but in science. If you can prove that you can be reincarnated into a cow and horse to work for me in your next life, then I'll forget it. But you can't prove whether there is reincarnation in the world now. If you die, wouldn't you avoid debt? I can tell you, as someone who repays kindness and revenge, if you owe me money, you must repay it. Don't try to run away. Do you want to die? Then I will save you and ask you to be a cow and a horse for me in this lifetime. Lin Feng pushed away Zhu Kaishan and squatted in front of Hilaosi. Zhu Kaishan was also angry when he heard the first half. My brothers are all dead, why can't you say a few good words? But when he heard it later, he tasted the taste. Does this mean that Hilaosi has been saved? He looked at the little brother in surprise, his lips trembling and his eyes showing a pleading expression. He was afraid that he would be wrong and turn his hopes into despair. What this guy means is that he can save Hilaosi. Zhu Kaishan watched as the old man opened his package, revealing a little silver dollar and unfamiliar paper currency inside, and instinctively held his breath. So much money, to be honest, he doesn't see much either. He is originally poor. Not a poor person, what kind of martial arts troupe did it cause? Fortunately, Zhu Kaishan quickly realized it. When he saw Lin Feng's smiling face, he immediately realized it. He slapped himself in the face. Looking at him like this, he is treating his brothers as if they have lost their lives. He is going to save people while still keeping an eye on these silver coins. Is Zhu Kaishan still a person? With a fierce slap, Zhu Kaishan slapped himself, causing half of his face to turn red and swollen. He knelt down on the ground and shouted loudly, Little brother, no, my benefactor. As long as you save the life of my brother Hilausi today, from now on, my life and Hilausi's life will all belong to you. If we dare to have ulterior motives, don't let our little brothers take action on our own. We will take care of our own lives, whether it's lighting the sky lamp or using six swords and twelve holes, there will be no complaints. These brothers who follow me can all testify to me. If I break this oath, then let these brothers kill me. I have nothing to say. The brothers who followed Zhu Kaishan and Hilausi when they ran away heard these words, glanced at each other, and suddenly knelt down. We are the same. Lin Feng glanced at them, and they were indeed a group of like dot minded individuals, all of whom were loyal heroes. Of course, this is also related to their small number of people. Plus Hilausi and Zhu Kaishan, there are a total of ten people. Ten people can still have one mind. Lin Feng slowly released his silent crossbow hidden behind him and said, All right, you don't have to worry too much. The temperature here is not high, and the meat near the wound has not rotted yet, which can be considered a good thing. I drugged him, but whether he can handle it or not depends on his luck he took out the white medicine for the knife wound, and he lousy carefully bandaged it before taking out the anti-inflammatory medicine. Whether he Laosi can survive depends on his physique and these anti-inflammatory drugs. Lin Feng asked Zhu Kaishan to pry open he Laosi's mouth and stuff medicine into his mouth. Not only that, Lin Feng also took out some cold medicine and fever-reducing medicine and stuffed them all into his mouth. I have done everything I can. Whether he Laosi can live or not depends on his fate. Zhu Kaishan anxiously watched as Lin Lao Di stuffed the green, purple, and red small pill into his brother's mouth, spinning around in a hurry, unsure of what he should do. Lin Feng picked up He Lao Si and said, Let's go find the nearest town here. Let's see if He Lao Si can reduce his fever first. As long as the fever subsides, everything will be safe. Zhu Kaishan grabbed the engineering shovel in his hand and said to his subordinates, Okay. Carry your fourth brother and let's go to the wild cow valley. After speaking, he helped Lin Feng pack everything up and said to Lin Feng, Fourth, get up, let's bow together. To be honest, our eldest and second brothers have all been punched to death. Nowadays, even though you are not our big brother, you are even heavier than our big brother. I, 
Zhu Lao San, keep my word. If I say that I and Lao Si have given their lives to you, then it's for you. But there are too many good things in your package, so don't let anyone see them on the way. Otherwise, something big will happen. It's necessary to kill some people to deter those people from stretching their hands. Upon arrival, Zhu Kaishan specifically instructed Lin Feng. Lin Feng nodded. Of course, he also knew that fortunately, for those extremely important medicines, Lin Feng discarded their packaging, wrapped them in paper, and wrote their names in pinyin. The rest of the people, even if they were snatching, were afraid to snatch the ocean and paper currency inside. They would never have thought that the most valuable things here were neither silver nor gold bars. In fact, the most valuable things here were those inconspicuous small pills, as well as Lin Feng himself with the reflection of the heavens. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Greed and Bad Officials, Knocking Bones and Absorbing Marrow You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Greed and Bad Officials, Knocking Bones and Absorbing Marrow There are no bison in the bison gully, but it is indeed a ditch. In the Buffalo Valley, there is a small town where people come from all over the world. They are all gathering ginseng guests. Beside the Buffalo Gully, there is a deep mountain. This bison ditch was built for the deep mountains nearby, where mountain goods are everywhere. Old ginseng, bear skin, black fungus, mushrooms, all kinds of rare treasures, everything is ready. The delicacies of the mountains and seas in northeast China are called mountain delicacies. Among these mountain treasures, old ginseng is also the most important. Many people here are ginseng collectors, just like swordsmen, they are all desperados who lick their blood with their swords. They are fierce and ruthless. The season for entering the mountains has passed, but these visitors have not left the Buffalo Valley. This year's financial situation is particularly bad. Some visitors choose to make money and spend money wherever they want, living in this small town and indulging in endless dreams. When Lin Feng, Zhu Kaishan, and He Laosi arrived at the Buffalo Valley, it was already a bit late. Lin Feng thought He Laosi was fine, but as he walked on the road, he already had a fever. Lin Feng poured him some anti-inflammatory drugs, but I'm not sure if they have any effect. Lin Feng brought some common medicines, but not many. Anti-inflammatory drugs are even more valuable than gold at this time. Lin Feng didn't take much. He also has no right to take more. The medicine he poured on He Laosi is now more expensive than gold. Lin Feng explained the principle to Zhu Kaishan. Zhu Kaishan didn't speak, but he remembered these words in his heart. Lin Feng is a straightforward and generous person who can handle things. Lin Feng walked into the town with his people, and countless pairs of eyes stared at this group of people. There is no good person among the guests in this town. Not a single one. Seeing Zhu Kaishan and others covered in blood, their eyes deliberately lingered on Lin Feng's backpack for a moment, and in the end, they all coincidentally cast their eyes on Lin Feng's backpack. Zhu Kaishan silently grasped the engineering shovel, stood on his shoulder, and looked back fearlessly. He stood in front of Lin Feng, following the group of brothers from Zhu Kaishan, placing their hands on their swords and looking over recklessly. The whole team was arrogant and domineering. Lin Feng also grasped the silent crossbow and calmly looked around. Two people staring at each other is considered provocation. Zhu Kaishan looked fearlessly at one person after another and averted his gaze before walking with Lin Feng towards the place where he was staying. The first impression this group gives is that it's not easy to provoke. This is also the reason why Zhu Kaishan did this. Having spent so many years in the martial arts world, Zhu Kaishan has a deep understanding of a truth. Strike with one punch to avoid a hundred punches. If you are new to someone else's territory and can do low voltage small, then do low voltage small, without shame. But when faced with a group of fugitives, being a low lying person is useless. Do low lying exercises in front of these people, they will eat you dry, wipe you clean, and even pee on your skull. 
Dealing with these fugitives, they don't want to die, let alone Zhu Kaishan. Lin Feng was even more calm. Before coming to the end of the Qing dynasty, he had already had psychological development. What was the least valuable thing in the late Qing dynasty? Human life. He came here with the intention of becoming a villain. If he softens his heart, he will die. Looking at these evil people here, Lin Feng became even more determined in his thoughts. He must pull up a team. Otherwise, even a lone wolf's life would be difficult here. The group walked into the largest shop here, and only those outside began to discuss. Yoha, he's still a martyr. These people look unfamiliar, I've never seen them before. Someone is hiding outside the small tavern, eating and drinking strong liquor and elbow meat. Song is probably the most extravagant group of people here, except for those who want to save money to marry a wife, buy a house, and have children. The rest of the Song don't know the reason for saving money. They run out of money and even make cameo appearances as bandits. They saw the new arrival and discussed with a hint of drunkenness. What's up, Lu Air? Do you want to go up and meet them? Hey, if you want to go and touch it, I'll really make a bet with my brothers to see if it's you, the local snake, or these strong dragons who cross the river. But if you die, your mistress, it's my turn to enjoy it at night. I've been hanging around your mistress with a pillow these days, just waiting for a damn chance. Someone instigated, someone teased, and even the big girl in a cotton jacket shyly looked out and hung a flag. A small buffalo ditch is full of demons and monsters. Lin Fong and Zhu Kaishan lifted the thick door curtains and brought the wind and snow into the place where they stayed. A group of old customers squinted their eyes and saw the people walking in. The shopkeeper raised his head slightly and took a glance, knowing that these chicks were not guests. The leader, I'm afraid he hasn't even seen blood before. But looking at this chick, I'm afraid it's also someone who can fight. Later, Zhu Kaishan walked in with his brothers, and the shopkeeper became enthusiastic. This hotel is not very spacious, with a stove burning inside and a group of people sitting underground drinking. Zhu Kaishan shoveled his engineer to the ground with a pestle, took off his hat, patted the snow, and said rudely, shopkeeper, give us two rooms. Be quick with your movements Lin Feng stood silent on the side, carefully examining the world. The guests drinking here have red faces and ears, braids at the back of their heads, and a variety of weapons. The people here carry knives and guns, and their eyes are not kind. They place their weapons on the table without any hesitation. More importantly, there are still a few officials here. These officials stared at Lin Feng and his group with greedy eyes, almost calling them fat sheep. These officials placed their eyes on Lin Feng's backpack. They had no intention of concealing their ill intentions and wanted to take advantage of the fire. They were just going to slaughter the fat sheep in a dignified manner. Zhu Kaishan finished his room and noticed the gaze of these officials. He pretended not to see anything and was pulling Lin Feng away. Hey, wait. Just as they were about to leave, a middle-aged man among the officials lazily spoke up and said, Wait a minute, you newcomer. I think you look a bit familiar. Shouldn't it be the remnants of the fleeing boxing troop? Or it could be the bandits around here. Interestingly, open all your packages and ask the master to take a look to see what prohibited items are inside. If not, it can be considered that I have wrongly blamed you. I am blind. But if there is, none of you, the remnants of the martial arts troop, can escape. Lin Feng knew from their appearance that they were planning to catch the autumn breeze. What kind of boxing troop is not? These bullies and cowards, if they had really met the people of the martial arts troop, would have probably left with their tails tucked in. Check. They dare to challenge the boxing troop. These damn things are just trying to blackmail me. Anyway, Lin Feng wouldn't ask anyone to open his package, just the silver dollars and pounds inside. As long as they appear here, everyone will wait for the fish to die and the net to be broken. Zhu Kaishan, along with his brothers, 
cannot stop the hungry wolves in this town. So when he heard these people's words, Lin Fong remained calm. He quietly grasped the crossbow inside his clothes. Zhu Kaishan looked back, and the brothers who followed Zhu Kaishan grabbed the knives on his body without saying a word. To be honest, everyone is a fugitive, who is afraid of who? Lin Fong was the same. He grabbed the silent crossbow and took out the most powerful thing he had brought from his thick clothes behind him. Bomb. This thing is made by local methods and is included in the militia manual. It's quite easy to handle, but it really can't be done. If you light it with his windproof lighter and leave it in this shop, no one will be able to survive. The shopkeeper saw this scene and silently moved behind the counter, familiar with it, hiding. Zhu Kaishan walked up with a smile and let out a simple laugh. He grabbed the official's hand and said, Oh, boss, boss, we brothers are all hard earned people. We are starving refugees, where can we fight? We're not going to die anymore. Boss, we just have ordinary looks. There's no such thing as a troublemaker Zhu Kaishan smiled without a trace, bending over and hunching his back. This official was called the CEO, and with a hmm sound, he was very arrogant. He only felt that when Zhu Kaishan shook hands, he stuffed the silver yuan into his hand, and his face immediately improved a lot. He hesitated for a moment and said, You guys look like bears, they don't seem to be punching people. Forget it, I'm in a good mood today and I'll let you go. Go away, be careful when you come here next time. What's wrong with your whole body covered in blood? Those who don't know thought you killed someone the official took advantage of it, looked at the small foreign in his hand, and happily turned around and left. Zhu Kaishan bent down and let out a few, hey, sounds, pulling Lin Fong and others away and quickly leaving. However, after turning around, both Zhu Kaishan and Lin Feng's faces were pale and terrifying. Especially Zhu Kaishan, with a strong killing intent in his eyes. These officials sneered twice, thinking that these people were afraid of them. They also know these people have tricks, but who doesn't have tricks here? In this buffalo gully, you people are dragons holding me up, tigers lying down for me. In this buffalo valley, men are the heavens here. They drink and eat meat, estimating that this group of people can still be squeezed a few more times. Entering this buffalo ditch, how many ounces of lard are in your stomach? The man will squeeze them out for you. These officials are ruthless and ruthless. When they encounter outsiders like Lin Fong, they will not give up until their bones are drained. Do you want to leave before squeezing out their bone marrow? There's no door. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Gathering Heroes and Landing Weapons, Seeking Recommendation Tickets You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Gathering Heroes and Landing Weapons, Seeking Recommendation Tickets, Zhu Kaishan paid the money and temporarily got rid of the group of hyenas asking for money. Lin Fong and others came to the room and placed He Laosi on the bed. There were a total of 17 people who followed Zhu Kaishan out of the martial arts troupe, and eight of them survived outside the pass. Adding He Laosi and him, in fact, they can still be considered brothers now, with only ten people. Ten people, two rooms, Lin Fong and Zhu Kaishan, and He Laosi, one room. Everyone else has one room. Brother Lin, it's not that Zhu Kaishan is reluctant to open more rooms. The main reason is that it's not safe here, and the residents are scattered. Sooner or later, something will happen entering the room, Zhu Kaishan first said, he's afraid that Brother Lin comes from a wealthy family and doesn't like to be squeezed together with these rough people. He's also afraid that Brother Lin thinks that Zhu Kaishan is not righteous and intentionally saves money, so he quickly explained to Lin Fong, afraid that Lin Fong might be dissatisfied. Lin Fong expressed his understanding, and he also saw it clearly. In this era, there is no royal law anymore. It is indeed better to see than to hear a hundred times. If it weren't for Zhu Kaishan, he would either be thrown in the snow and eaten by wolves, or killed by someone in the town. In this chaotic era, big cities may be better, 
but small towns still have to rely on their fists. Fists are the truth. This is the same as what he thought before he came to this world, but now he has Zhu Kaishan and others, not alone. He watched as the others left, covered he Laosi with a blanket, pulled over two chairs, and said to Zhu Kaishan, Brother Zhu, I'll be honest now. Everyone is their own person, so I won't beat around the bush. I, Lin Fong, come from Nanyang and want to do some business here. Just looking like this, if you want to make a career, you can't do it without the help of your brothers. I will give you a cover for my plans. After the fourth brother of the He family wakes up, Zhu, don't leave and follow me. I plan to go to Ice City. As long as I arrive at the Ice City, I will give my brothers the capital to settle down and establish their lives. I will leave my words here, and in the future, as long as someone Lin has something to eat, you will have something to drink. What do you think? Upon hearing this, Zhu Kaishan nodded in agreement without saying a word. Zhu Kaishan has not read many books and has limited literacy, but he has a clear and clear mind. Strong dragons do not suppress local snakes. They are all fugitives from the court. Even if they break into the Kanto region, they will live a secret of life, and even their wives and children dare not take them over. But when he saw Lin Fong and what he looked like, Zhu Kaishan felt that Lin Fong was a person of loyalty, generosity, and ability to handle things. Follow him, it's not embarrassing. Okay. Zhu Kaishan didn't say a thousand words. When he saw Lin Fong soliciting himself, he just patted his chest and said yes, just like he Laosi. Once an agreement was reached, Lin Fong began planning. Lin Fong went out and asked the staff in the store to bring some hot water to boil. He also touched He Laosi's head and breathed a sigh of relief when he found it wasn't too hot. He Laosi was lucky enough to meet Lin Fong. Otherwise, starting from his journey through the Kanto region, he might not have had his role as He Laosi. After cleaning up He Laosi's wound, Lin Fong applied the white medicine in the package to him again. He Laosi, like a dead pig, remained motionless. Zhu Kaishan touched He Laosi's head and found that the fever had subsided, and he also breathed a sigh of relief. Lin Fong just discussed another matter with him. I have a batch of divine medicines here, which are special medicines for treating wobbly children in Nanyang. This medicine is worth more than a thousand dollars when sold. But now, I have changed my mind. I don't think it's a good time to sell this medicine now. Brothers, with no knives or guns in their hands, the shops that can take my divine medicine may have some background. If I'm not careful, I'm afraid they'll come and kill and rob me. Of course, I still have some hard jade bracelets on me, which are also hard currency, but they are not for sale, so there's no need to worry about them in the next few days. I have money in my hands, arm my brothers first. Yes. My brother's thinking makes sense. Zhu Kaishan was very clear that what Lin Fong said was reasonable, but the divine medicine could not be sold. He felt that this hard jade bracelet could be sold to try the water. After discussing with Zhu Kaishan, Lin Fong nodded and said, Brother Zhu, these are not important. I see a mix of good and bad in this town, and I'm wondering if we can get this here. If we can't get it here, we'll go to Ice City. My brothers, with this, I feel at ease in my heart. Lin Fong made a foreign gun gesture towards Zhu Kaishan. Speaking a thousand words, this person feels uneasy because he doesn't have a handle in his hand. Zhu Kaishan looked at this gesture and nodded. No problem, just buy it from those officials. These people are all old smokers, and as long as they have money, they can even sell my mother. We cannot intervene in this matter. If we intervene, it will be fat sheep. These animals will definitely eat black. Brother Lin, give me a few days. In a few days, I will definitely find a middleman and handle this matter for us. If it doesn't work out, let's go to Ice City. There are Mousy and High Dot ranking officials from the Imperial Court in the Ice City, and there is a wide range of transactions there. Zhu Kaishan told Lin Fong not to worry about these things. 
he will handle these small matters. Zhu Kaishan has seen the power of a foreign gun. He also has a clear understanding of foreign guns, and he absolutely understands and supports Lin's desire for foreign guns. Okay. This is the first thing, Lin Feng has a second thing to do for Zhu Kaishan. We will temporarily rest up and leave here in a few days. Brother Zhu, I need you to inquire about the road to this town and also by transportation in advance. We're not short of money, as fast as we can. Leaving this deep mountain forest on two legs, isn't that a joke? Big cities have their advantages. A small town is better than a small town. Lin Feng, who has silver dollars and pounds on his body, cannot fully utilize these resources in this small town without going to big cities. Zhu Kaishan agreed to him and turned around wanting to leave. At this moment, someone is knocking on the door outside. Zhu Kaishan's eyes flickered sharply, signaling Lin Feng not to move. He walked to the door with a dart in his hand and asked, Who is that? I, the shopkeeper, will bring you hot water. The shopkeeper shouted outside, and Zhu Kaishan and Lin Feng glanced at each other and opened the door. The shopkeeper walked in, and Zhu Kaishan's evil energy disappeared from his face. He turned a simple and honest smile and said, Shopkeeper, have you brought hot water? The shopkeeper saw Lin Feng and Zhu Kaishan, put down the hot water, and said with some meaning, I see that neither of you is a simple person. This small buffalo ditch can't hold up even a few big figures like ye. However, this strong dragon is not yet overwhelming the local snake. Master, there's no need to have the same opinion as those thugs. Lin Feng and Zhu Kaishan both nodded and said yes. The shopkeeper glanced at them again, hesitated for a moment, and continued, Look, you're new here. Don't blame me for being talkative. There are not many outsiders in this town. There are many fugitives here who lick their blood with knives. Even if they kill someone today, they will leave tomorrow and the government cannot catch them. So in this town, it's actually a mess, and the gentlemen are free to do whatever they want here. There are a few things to remember, gentlemen. The first thing is that the people do not fight against the officials. The second thing is not to go out tonight. The third thing is, no matter what you hear at night, don't care, don't open the window, and don't respond. The last thing, don't provoke the few shops selling mountain goods here. These shops are not simple. After speaking, the shopkeeper turned around and wanted to leave. Lin Feng looked at the shopkeeper as a local snake, speaking confidently. He exchanged a glance with Zhu Kaishan and grabbed the shopkeeper's sleeve. Shopkeeper, shopkeeper, don't leave yet. Hey, come and sit down. Our brothers, who are new here, are also afraid of accidents. It seems that you are a veteran here. We have some things to attend to, please give us some guidance Lin Feng spoke politely and glanced at Zhu Kaishan. Zhu Kaishan had a keen eye and stuffed Xiao Yang into the shopkeeper's hand. With the money, the shopkeeper smoothly put Xiao Yang into his sleeve and didn't rush to leave. He put his hands inside his sleeves and said with a smile on his face, Cheng, looking at the kind-hearted gentleman, I'm fine too. I'll just chat with them. What do you guys want to ask? As long as I know, I will definitely know everything and guarantee your satisfaction Zhu Kaishan went over and closed the door, leaving behind Lin Feng and the shopkeeper. After some communication, the shopkeeper got the money and left, and Lin Feng also got the answer he wanted. Shan Hua Pu Zi Lin Feng didn't expect that all the mountain shops in this small town were old brands. Some mountain vendors can even contact bandits and officials. It seems that the water bought and sold here is very deep. Lin Feng knows that there's no need to hit anyone, the whereabouts of this foreign gun are already there. It's right inside this mountain goods shop. I bought weapons, and when he Laosi can leave, everyone will leave here, go to Ice City, and show off their skills. The mountain goods shop can resell firearms from the court. It seems that this mountain goods shop is not ordinary in itself. 
Lin Fong thought to himself and took out the hard jade bracelet. He carefully explored it, feeling lost in thought. End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Knowledge is Power. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Knowledge is Power Lin Fong stroked the hard jade bracelet, hoping that the knowledge he gained from books was correct. There was nothing to say overnight. He Laosi's fever finally subsided in the evening. This kid has been practicing martial arts since childhood and has strong qi and blood, which is not a bad thing in this chaotic world. Lin Fong also didn't try to wander on the street at night. The next morning, Lin Fong and Zhu Kaishan went out with a few brothers. As soon as he walked out of the house, Zhu Kaishan said in a low voice, There's a tale. Lin Fong heard a tale but didn't speak. He pretended not to know anything and the group walked into the mountain goods shop. Zhu Kaishan then said in a deep voice, It was yesterday's official. Lin Fong furrowed his brow slightly. These officials are really stubborn thieves. It seems that these few people really treat them like fat sheep. Don't give up until you eat. Don't worry, once we buy the goods, we'll eliminate them. Lin Fong said fiercely. The group entered the mountain goods store and saw a young man approach, politely asking them, I don't know how many distinguished guests are you interested in selling or buying. Lin Fong made a gun gesture. The elementary school apprentice looked at it and quickly asked them to sit aside and drink tea. I can't make a decision on this matter, I'll go invite our shopkeeper. You wait here, he said Lin Fong nodded and sat on the side with Zhu Kaishan, without taking off his hat. Because Lin Fong doesn't have a braid, although there are people who have removed their braids now, they are still not mainstream. Lin Fong estimated that if he had arrived at the ice city, it would be better to say that he was a monk returning to secular life. After a while, the shopkeeper came from behind, and Lin Fong saw the shopkeeper with a surprised expression for the first time. This shopkeeper, he's not quite right. Can this person be a shopkeeper? Is this a business? What are you joking about? This is not outside the pass, where humans and bears become spirits. If it weren't for the elementary school apprentice following behind this person, Lin Fong might have thought that this elementary school apprentice was making people eat black. Even Zhu Kaishan couldn't help but show a surprised expression. Without him, because this person is really too majestic. On this extremely cold day, this shopkeeper is about two meters tall, covered in lumps, and his muscles are about to turn into rocks. His eyes are shining brightly. The shopkeeper's bald head, wearing a melon skin hat and a literati coat, still couldn't cover his body's flesh, and was fierce. Is this person the shopkeeper? This is not Baturu, Lin Fong doesn't believe it. Lin Fong looked at Zhu Kaishan, and then Zhu Kaishan whispered to Lin Fong, external skill everyone. This is a master. Lin Fong looked at this so dot called external skill expert and felt that his previous judgment of the world was somewhat arbitrary. He suddenly had some bad speculations about the master who was chasing Zhu Kaishan. How do you compare with him? Lin Fong also whispered to Zhu Kaishan in a low voice. I'm not as good as him, old Zhu. Zhu Kaishan briefly said. Lin Fong asked again, is that the expert who is chasing you? Those old eunuchs, with profound skills, can slap this shopkeeper to death. I have seen experts from the imperial court who clap the stones with one palm, and under the other, the blue stones are as soft as tofu. Our boxing troop of over a hundred brothers did not stop the old eunuch Zhu Kaishan said. Lin Fong took a cold breath. This. No, isn't the force value in this world a bit high? A hundred enemies, flesh hands beating blue stones. Not to mention that, Zhu Kaishan continued to explain, we were all in a mess because among the people who chased us, there were also Taoist shamans worshipped by the court. These Taoist shamans all have magic, no matter how we escape, we can be caught up by them. So we dare not stay here for too much time. The last pursuit was on the road outside the pass ten days ago. 
We don't know when this expert will come again if Zhu Kaishan had said this before, Lin Feng might not have believed it. Now that he saw this strong shopkeeper, Lin Feng felt a bit convinced. He decided to go back and ask Zhu Kaishan carefully, what is the military value of this world? Lin Feng felt a bit confused. Just accepted him to venture into Kanto. Breaking through, breaking through outside the pass has a bit of a fairy tale vibe. I just hope there won't be any southern or northern horses in the future. Otherwise it would be even more outrageous. Lin Feng roast, but he can't whisper now. After learning about the mysterious power in this world, he felt a bit anxious. It seems that we still need to improve our strength. Otherwise, it would be really difficult to deal with being caught up by the so dot called expert in the industry in old Jew's mouth. At least with the foreign gun in hand, there is a possibility of indiscriminate shooting and killing them. The shopkeeper saw Lin Fong and gestured for him to go inside and chat with him. Upon arriving in the inner room, the shopkeeper asked them to sit down and raise their hand, asking, Are you going to buy this? He gestured for a gun. Lin Fong nodded and said, Yes. That's no problem. We have guns from the north and fresh goods from the court, but the price needs to be discussed. Let me start by saying that in this shop, I am known for being honest with both young and old people. You can also go out and inquire. My shop may not be the lowest bidder here, but it is the safest place to buy and sell here. Before buying or selling, you must first know that guns are not valuable with me. Bullets are valuable. The shopkeeper's eyes were fixed on the incoming guests, observing their reactions. Mainly staring at Lin Fong. He spoke candidly, and his eyes were also poisonous. The shopkeeper can tell that Lin Fong is the one in charge among this group. From this person's temperament, he is someone who is not short of money. Apart from anything else, he is a person of hardship. There is no such thing as a strong waistline. Not to mention that after he finished talking about the price, the person following this young man repeatedly looked at him with their eyes. Upon hearing this person's words, Lin Fong was not in a hurry. He pondered for a moment, then extended his hand to the back. Zhu Kaishan quickly put a hard jade bracelet into Lin Feng's hand. I know everything you say, but when I come back, I also want to exchange things. I also have something, I would like to invite the shopkeeper's palm eye. This bracelet, shopkeeper, to be honest with you, it's a good product that I finally managed to get. Take a look, will you accept this bracelet or not? Lin Feng looked at the shopkeeper without blinking his eyes. He wanted to see if the homework he had done in advance was useful. The bracelet in his hand is worth only a few hundred yuan in modern times. For Lin Feng, this is just a worthless little thing. Even natural hard jade bracelets cost only a few thousand or a few hundred yuan. This hard jade bracelet, whether from the perspective of water quality, transparency, or mining, is not very popular. When buying this thing, they even thought it was a loss to give him an extra paper bag. Colin Fong knew that this thing must be valuable at this moment. He flipped back and forth, earning less than a few hundred times is a loss. Sure enough, upon seeing this item, the shopkeeper came to his senses. Your esteemed guest, put it on the table first, I'll take a look. The shopkeeper saw this hard jade bracelet and immediately came to his senses. Lin Fong placed it on the table, and the shopkeeper carefully looked at it. He let out another offending cry and rubbed it, his eyes full of energy. Lin Fong saw his reaction and knew he had guessed right. This hard jade bracelet is the hard currency at this time. This bracelet, you want to make a big profit. Because he knew that at this moment, this bracelet was neither sold to the poor nor to ordinary people. This item is sold to the flag bearer. This bracelet can be sold because there is wind and rain in the Qin court. In this court culture, I love this bracelet. As the saying goes, there must be something good above and something bad below. Hard jade bracelets, even the old Buddha in the palace at this time has several in his hands. This is a tradition of the Qin court. 
Regardless of whether this bracelet is worth money in later generations, which harem lady doesn't have this bracelet right now. If the upper part likes a certain item, then the lower part is even more popular. These nobles and nobles, as well as the elder brothers and sisters, see this in the palace. When they return home, whose family's fortune and wife don't have one or two hard jade bracelets in their hands. This bracelet is not an antique, it is a popular luxury item nowadays. Top Luxury Goods Selling bracelets at the Mountain Goods Store is a bit strange, but Lin Fong remembers clearly that when the shopkeeper talks about this store, he uses all four words of means. The meaning of hidden poking is that this shop is also related to the government. It's related to the government, so this bracelet is even more valuable. The shopkeeper touched the hard jade bracelet and said with a burning gaze, your esteemed guest also has a background. If you come to my shop to sell this thing, I won't hide it from you. This thing is good, but is it just for this price? He grabbed Lin Feng's hand and placed it under the table, gesturing. Lin Feng touched his hand and touched a finger, feeling a bit confused. How much does this finger cost? One hundred silver dollars ten tails of gold. It can't be ten thousand dollars. The problem is, if it were changed to De Yang, Lin Feng would actually be at a loss. Although this bracelet is a hard currency for the upper class in this era, it would be ridiculous to say it costs 10,000 yuan. Besides, what Lin Feng wants is not money either. Money, he has plenty, what he wants is the local specialties. Old ginseng, mushrooms, wood, porcelain, antiques, potions. These things, he changed hands and went back, and with his father's way, they could be sold immediately. He doesn't even know how much he can sell by reselling. Besides, Lin Fong has regained his senses now and looked at the owner's wolf-like tiger body, showing some greed. He wants this person to learn the techniques. Lin Fong looked at the shopkeeper, who didn't speak either. Just looking at Lin Fong, the two of them fell silent. The shopkeeper thought that Lin Fong didn't want to buy, but Lin Fong didn't know what the shopkeeper's actual bid was. Two people, frozen. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Dragon Subduing Fist Manual, Compassionate Heart. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 Dragon Subduing Fist Manual, Compassionate Heart. Lin Fong and the shopkeeper looked at each other. Lin Fong is not in a hurry. Although the shopkeeper appears calm on the surface, he is actually a bit drumming. He is bound to win this thing. The shopkeeper who stayed in did not deceive Lin Fong. The owner of this mountain goods shop does have a great background. Just who this person is, let's talk about it later. Let's just talk about this bracelet. It's really in high demand among those nobles and nobles, and this kind of thing has never been considered expensive. Not to mention, there are also farms owned by nobles and nobles here. The servants who manage these farms are each more abundant than their masters. If the head of the household is trained not to like or dislike slaves, even evil slaves can devour the master. Not to mention the surplus servants. Lin Fong brought this thing, but it came. It's time to make a big profit. This item is a must-have for the shopkeeper. In a few more days, it will be Fujin's birthday. The shopkeepers from all over the country will have their hearts set. If someone doesn't go, all the gifts should be given. Although this item cannot be used as a primary gift, it is also a good gift. So he didn't know whether Lin Fong was buying or not, whether he despised the cheap, or whether he couldn't bear to part with it. Lin Fong was also pondering, his thoughts were different from those of the shopkeeper. He still has several bracelets. Should he take out another one, pair the two bracelets together, buy some bullets or exchange for some mountain goods? Who knew that seeing Lin Fong intentionally pinching, the shopkeeper gritted his teeth. Damn it, this time it's really a failure. This person really knows how to handle things. The gift we gathered for Gu Ji's birthday and year is just a damn money-saving gift. If he saves money here, then his future can also be saved by the old prince. 
With this in mind, the shopkeeper gritted his teeth and said, Sir, you have to speak up. What is my price really like? If you don't like it, we can still discuss it again. Buying and selling is not just about sitting on the ground and starting at a low price to pay back money. Can you give me a number so that I can talk back? You don't even offer a price, you don't even shake your head, I'm a bit unsure. I really can't do it. I still have a lot of good things here. Let's exchange this item first, let's talk about something else Lin Fong looked at it, hee hee, it's a good thing. This shopkeeper is in a hurry, he can squeeze out an extra two tails of oil and water. Outside the mountain goods shop. A few officials poked their hands into their sleeves, and the cold wind was like a knife, watching from outside. I said the second, after waiting for a long time, an official couldn't help but say, your estimation is really accurate. You said those people must have good things on them, what kind of good things are they? This person has entered the mountain goods shop. What, do you still want to rob the mountain goods shop? What if they exchange the good goods in their hands? Among these officials, the second one is the one who extorted Lin Fong yesterday. This person, despite his unremarkable appearance, has a skill that is said to have been obtained through trading with Huang Pizzi. Find wealth and treasure. He exchanged his own and the lives of his entire family for his lifetime of glory and wealth. With his nose, he can smell the smell of treasure. These people, relying on this nose, he searches for prey, robs and kills, and indeed lives a surplus. There are many people like this outside the pass. There are many great immortals outside the pass, and there are also many people doing business with them. These are more formal, have hall mouths, and have inheritances, called the horse immortal. The disciples serve the great immortal and generally do not cause any accidents. Irregular, like a yellow-skinned person doing business with this official, that's to protect your wealth and prosperity for the first half of your life, and then take the life of your entire family. Malicious. Hurry up. Hurry up, bird. Why are you both so noisy? As Guerre said, if these people have goods on them, they have goods on them. Even if these people buy the good things on their bodies, there will definitely be a lot of money. What if we kill someone and get the money then? The old man disdainfully said, and he even coughed and spat phlegm in the snow, with blood streaks, which was very disgusting. Seeing how confidently the second officer spoke, the other officials also nodded. Okay, I'll trust you for a while. After eating these fat sheep later, we'll be six, you'll be four. The official who was with him said. Okay. You guys just wait. I said, these people must be fat sheep. You see, they entered the mountain goods store, there must be something good there. In fact, these people are really good at it. Lin Fong has a lot of good things in his hands. Two bracelets, priced at 1,400 yuan in Lin Feng's world, bought back ten long and short guns, a thousand bullets, and more importantly, in front of Lin Fong, this black box of ointment. This box of ointment was sent out, and the shopkeeper also felt a bit distressed. These long and short guns are all unprofitable transactions. The court gave them to the camp, and he could get them back without any money. But this ointment, that's truly valuable. Lin Fong held this ointment and tried to suppress his joy. This ointment is used to refine external skills. Lin Fong just tinkered on the side, feeling a bit confused. The shopkeeper couldn't hold back and took out ten guns, several bullets, and this box of ointment to buy a pair of hard jade bracelets from his hand. Lin Fong has made a lot of money. Equivalent to 140 yuan per gun, and this ointment. This is a good thing that even money cannot buy. This ointment is one of the secrets of the Qing dynasty. In the early Qing dynasty, when the martial arts were eradicated, all the things used to refine skin and flesh fell into the hands of the royal family. Zhu Kaishan's martial arts were good, but they were only good. Lao Zhu is a poor person who cannot practice true martial arts. It is said that the truly powerful inner martial arts masters lived for over 150 years and walked like the wind. 
The old eunuch chasing them, even if encountering a magic spell, can still crack it with one palm and twist the necks of those demons and witches. With this thing, old Ju can take it further while he is still young. More importantly, Lin Fong looked at the co-leader of this transaction and tried to suppress his expression. His path of practicing martial arts has been revitalized. The shopkeeper thought that Lin Fong liked martial arts, so he gave him a martial arts manual. This thing doesn't seem like much to the shopkeeper. This martial arts manual is neither Baji nor Tai Chi, but a small school of martial arts called Fulong Fist. The name is very big, but the actual effect is average, otherwise it wouldn't be considered a pairing. But Lin Fong was happy because he flipped through it and found that this boxing technique had been perfected to the point of tearing apart tigers and leopards with his hands, lifting qi for hundreds of miles. Although the possibility of achieving great success in practice seems unlikely, even for small success, Lin Fong is still very happy. After all, in the world he is in, it is absolutely impossible to practice such martial arts. No one thinks that health is not important. This is the true high reward, a good thing that was not obtained in the real world before. In the real world, let alone the existence of Kung Fu masters. Even if there are, the upper limit of Kung Fu masters is not as high as in this world. From the words and phrases of the shopkeeper Zhu Kaishan just now, Lin Feng pieced together a fragmented world. He found that he still underestimated those true masters who appeared in the martial arts troupe and ultimately swept away the murders. Those people were truly light as a swallow, with both internal and external energy emanating from them. It is the same as the martial arts masters in the martial arts novels. Lin Feng exchanged these two bracelets and left through the back door of the mountain goods store, leaving the shopkeeper reluctant to part. Manager Lin, he spoke politely and took out a sign and stuffed it into Lin Feng's hand, saying, I don't think Manager Lin is a simple person. In this way, I can also find a buyer for my shop. Our Huangjia Mountain Goods store accepts all kinds of goods. Whether in the mountains or in the city, there are people from our Huang family shop. If shopkeeper Lin has anything good, just send it to our shop. As long as the shopkeeper Lin can make a move, we can eat it. In the future, when you take my brand and go to various places, you will definitely be honest and worry-free, both young and old. Lin Fong took a glance, took the sign, thanked him, and walked out. It wasn't until they left that the elementary apprentice walked in from behind and asked with some confusion, Boss, why are you so polite today? The big shopkeeper with a tiger's back and a bear's waist smiled and said, You don't understand, I think this person looks like an outsider. He must have a lot of good things in his hand. The thing he took out today, it just went from place to place. You still need to experience a few points. The big shopkeeper was smiling as he repeatedly fumbled for the hard jade bracelet, took the brocade box, wiped it, and put it inside. He knew that this person still had something good, but because he was afraid, he didn't take it out. What does that matter? This hard jade bracelet is worth so much. That Fu Long Fist was actually a gift from the shopkeeper. As long as we hold on to this seller, won't his business stabilize in the future? Killing chickens and laying eggs is certainly refreshing, but should the reputation of this Huang family shop, which has been small for a hundred years, still exist? Fame is here, only those visitors in the mountains dare to confidently give away all the exotic treasures they find. Even a thousand tales of silver cannot match the reputation that Huang's shop has built over the years. Thinking of this, the shopkeeper smiled proudly. Lin Feng also laughed happily. Both sides felt that they had taken a big advantage. Before Lin Feng could let go of his joy, he saw several officials on the street corner who were watching closely. Looking at these officials, Lin Feng's smile became even more brilliant. Lin Feng is a kind-hearted person. He felt that before this person died, they must have a good mood, in order to be better on the road. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Introducing the Lord into the Jar, Seeing Blood in the First Battle You are listening at NovelFull.audio 
Chapter 8 Introducing the Lord into the jar, seeing blood in the first battle Lin Fong returned to the inn and placed his long and short guns on the Kong. Seeing these things, he Lao Si's eyes lit up. Third brother, Brother Lin, are you here? Seeing that he Lao Si was doing well, before Lin Fong could be happy, Zhu Kaishan slapped he Lao Si on the head. Are you finally so thorough, kid? Do you know how your kid's life came about? It's brother Lin, he spent the same expensive medicine as gold to save you. You don't even look at yourself, are you really worth this price? I calculated the reward for old Jew, but it's not enough to fill it for you. So when you had a fever, I bought your life for brother Lin. You are now brother Lin's person. This matter must be successful now, and if not, it must be successful. If you can move, then get up, the three of us sworn brothers. If you dare to say, no, I will kill you now. The other brothers stood behind, and Zhu Kaishan covered the revolver of his short gun and aimed it at He Laosi's head. Without saying a word, He Laosi ignored his thigh injury and knelt down to Kowtow. This troublemaker values loyalty, and when it comes to forming friendships, it's not ambiguous. Brother Lin, you saved my life. From now on, I will give you my life. He Laosi knelt down and knocked a few times for Lin Fong. Lin Fong couldn't help but cry and laugh. All right, get up. Lin Fong is not a sentimental person either, after all, he saved He Laosi, which is why he meant it. If you continue to be sentimental here, it will be hypocritical. Get up, then at this moment, the three of us are sworn on the spot. After we have sworn sworn, we still have to do something big. Lin Fong, Zhu Kaishan, and He Laosi are sworn brothers, and the younger brothers behind are witnesses. Lin Fong distributed the guns and promised to go to the ice city to give them some money and good time. But first of all, they have to kill those officials. First, come and submit the petition. Anyway, everyone is just a remnant of the martial arts troupe, and they don't care about a few dog officials anymore. Lin Fong encouraged them to participate in some activities together, and he always felt uneasy. Besides, whether these people can use foreign guns is also a question. This foreign gun still needs to be practiced. Zhu Kaishan knows how to use foreign guns. His brothers, Zhu Kaishan, can all teach. Teaching is one thing, and whether one can learn or not is another matter. Everyone should always be familiar with weapons. After much thought, those greedy-looking hyenas can indeed be used as trial objects. Lin Fong and Zhu Kaishan planned an action and had people go out to monitor these dog officials. As for Lin Fong, he discussed martial arts with He Laosi. I don't know if I don't discuss it, but when I discuss it, it really startles me. Turns out there are not only martial arts in this world, but also various supernatural powers. Lin Fong saw He Laosi pull out a talisman from his clothes. Five Ghost Nightmare Town Talisman He had just urged the talisman, and Lin Fong felt a darkness before his eyes. He was waiting to see the light again when he saw Zhu Kaishan holding his hand and praising the back of Lao Si's neck. Fourth, you bastard. Brother Lin has a weak body, you're going to knock him out. He Lao Si also knew that he had caused trouble. He allowed Zhu Kaishan to beat and scold, and only then did he Lao Si smile when he saw Lin Fong wake up. Hey hey hey, third brother, stop smoking, stop smoking. Brother, Wake up, wake up. Zhu Kaishan stopped and brewed a cup of tea, handing it to Lin Fong. Lin Fong took the tea and felt lingering palpitations until now. What is this thing? Lin Fong looked at this talisman and asked. This is the Five Ghost Nightmare Talisman. This was given by Aunt Lu during our fight. Brother, if you like this thing, I'll give it to you. He Laosi generously gave this item to Lin Fong. Lin Fong held this thing and didn't know what to say for a moment. He looked up and down at this object. This talisman was drawn with cinnabar brush, carried on yellow paper, and looks nothing unusual. But just now, He Laosi activated the talisman. 
he was like a prisoner locked up in a black room, with no sound or light. Until now, he was covered in cold sweat and scared. This thing may really be a talisman. Where are the six aunties who gave you talismans? Lin Fong felt hot in his heart. It seemed that Lu Gu was a master. Is there a chance to learn art from her? In the end, the old eunuch who was chased after crushed his neck and died. He Laosi said dejectedly. Lin Fong suddenly felt that the flame in his heart had been extinguished. The cultivator was pinched to death by the martial arts practitioner. Is this reasonable? No, what's the situation? Lin Fong asked He Laosi, and Zhu Kaishan saw that Lin Fong was very interested in this kind of thing and explained it clearly to him. Lin Fong finally understood that there is a limit to both cultivating immortals and practicing martial arts here. The limit of practicing martial arts is the realm of immortality. Immortals can live for hundreds of years. Zhu Kaishan said he had never seen a human immortal who was several hundred years old. It is said that this immortal has long neglected human affairs and sought opportunities for immortality. If that's all, that's all. In addition to martial arts practitioners, there are also cultivators. There are not many serious cultivators in the martial arts troupe, and most of them are skilled in a few tricks and crooked ways. The art of sorcery, whether it is a technique or a method, once mastered, has five drawbacks and three deficiencies. More importantly, this art has its limits. Encountering a master like an old eunuch, there is no use in any magic, it's all a result of being pinched to death. Use this five ghost nightmare control token to suppress the big shopkeeper in the mountain goods shop. This token is like waste paper and useless. Overall, such small talismans are suitable for dealing with people with weak chi and blood. Used on martial arts masters, useless. Lin Feng's heart surged upon hearing this. He finally confirmed that there are indeed supernatural powers in this world. That is to say, this world has infinite possibilities. He can not only obtain some wealth in this world. More importantly, he seems to be able to gain some power in the real world that cannot be achieved. For example, cultivating immortals. For example, practicing martial arts. He Laosi noticed that the young man is very interested in practicing martial arts and cultivating immortality. However, thinking that his younger brother could easily take out medicine that was even more valuable than gold, He Laosi felt that his brother wanted to cultivate immortality. Wealth is the most important aspect of the land, and as long as one has money, it is not impossible to learn. Lin Fong didn't hide anything, so he showed He Laosi the Fulong fist. He Laosi glanced at it twice, then slammed his mouth and said, My skills are better than mine. But I have been practicing Eagle Claw since I was young, and I can't use this dragon subduing fist. Besides, what I practiced with He Laosi was just a trick for performing under the overpass, average he gave the martial arts manual to Lin Fong and said, Lao Wu, if you want to practice, I, He Laosi, really don't know how to do it. But if you want to practice martial arts, I, He Laosi, can teach you everything I know. This talisman, unfortunately, I didn't see any use at the time and took it too little. You know, if you like it, I should have taken two more at that time. Upon hearing these words, Lin Fong couldn't help but laugh and cry. He Laosi, I don't know if it's a rectal or a single-minded person. Lin Fong likes to deal with people like this. Here, Zhu Kaishan has already distributed the guns to his brothers. Among these brothers, there are not many who can wield foreign guns. The foreign gun purchased this time is the M1882 from Li's company, which has decent power when used. It was purchased and distributed by the court from foreigners. Unexpectedly, when the front foot arrived at the camp, the back foot was sold by someone. Zhu Kaishan taught his brothers some basic usage techniques. He Laosi was rubbing his hands and preparing to harm those officials. I am extremely familiar with those officials, whether they are Zhu Kaishan or He Laosi. He Laosi dares to pat his chest and promise that as long as they go out, 
these greedy officials will definitely follow behind them and take advantage of the opportunity they have left alone to kill and intercept goods. But if they stay together all the time, it's not easy to take action. Someone needs to be left alone as bait. Lin Fong chose himself without hesitation. He is not really afraid of these officials. The most important thing is that in this chaotic era, he also needs to practice courage. This era is an era of cannibalism, where good people have no good fate. As the saying goes, killing and setting fire to a golden belt, repairing bridges and roads without corpses. Lin Fong also needs to practice his courage. He also wants to try his own curved bow, what kind of power is it in this era? They stayed here for another day, and on the third day, the group openly said they wanted to leave, deliberately making noise in front of the shop door, letting everyone know. The shopkeeper behind the counter saw this scene and silently shook his head. Lin Fong first said he was going out to purchase. Seeing Lin Fong go out alone, someone immediately followed him. Surprisingly, there were not three officials involved. They also gathered a group of guests to engage in activities of robbing families and houses. Lin Fong walked out from here and turned into a shop. He calmly opened the box behind him and took out the composite bow inside. What is this kid doing? In order to scare the snake, these few people didn't follow too closely and didn't know what Lin Fong had done. They called a visitor in to gather information. As soon as this guest entered, his eyes turned black. As soon as the black color passed, the visitor saw a person in front of him, setting up a bow and arrow, holding a bow and arrow that had never appeared in this world before. Facing him, he shot an arrow at close range. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Arrows like meteors, three ghosts lift a sedan chair. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Arrows like meteors, three ghosts lift a sedan chair Lin Fong adjusts 45 pounds, aim, release the spreader. The visitor who had just been suppressed by the five ghost nightmares talisman for less than a second saw arrows flying towards him. This is also the last scene he saw. In less than a second, the arrow penetrated his left eye and penetrated from behind his head. The guest's life is in vain. Not caring about the screams of the people behind him, Lin Fong turned around and left the shop. The group of people across from him didn't react at all. Lin Fong had already taken action, and his arrows were shooting like shooting stars. Another guest was shot in the stomach by an aluminum arrow and fell down. The composite bow in Lin Feng's hand, placed in ancient times, is truly a great weapon. This composite bow, in any way, surpasses the times. Materials, mechanics, and manufacturing techniques, the emergence of this bow and arrow has surpassed this era for a long time, making it a true battlefield terror weapon. Not to mention the stabilizer, regulator, and sight on it. This thing is a sharp weapon used for killing. Perhaps encountering, it is still unknown whether this bow and arrow can make great achievements. But now, when he met these participants, Lin Feng's arrows were more than enough. With just one move, these participants didn't even have the power to fight. Lin Feng's face remained calm. He took out another arrow and bent his bow before shooting again. The speed at which he arched and built was simply beyond the imagination of those people. Lin Feng's hands were very stable, and he was like a ruthless fortress. Those ginseng guests and officials who were killed by one person were like bereaved dogs. Following behind these people, Zhu Kaishan and several brothers, who were waiting for the opportunity to take action, looked somewhat dumbfounded. Well, why is this fifth lord so powerful? After the sworn oath, Lin Feng became the fifth prince. Zhu Kaishan was also a bit dumbfounded, he didn't know why this little brother was so powerful. He felt that if he didn't get up yet, he wouldn't need to train. Old Five alone can kill all these people. This Old Five is a hero. Lin Feng never expected that things would go so smoothly. He never even thought that in the late Qing dynasty, there were not many people who could pull a bow and mount a horse. Even in the new army camp, there are many people who smoke and drink, 
and their bodies break down. These participants are skilled in wielding knives and guns. Playing with bows and arrows. No way. Lin Fong fired five arrows in a row, and four people fell to the ground. A few are already out of breath. The officials didn't have any firearms in their hands, he only had a sword in his hand. When they saw Lin Fong sniping from a distance, these officials shouted and wanted to scatter and escape. At this moment, Zhu Kaishan shouted from behind, Kill me. He and the group of brothers came together, banging their guns and killing all the remaining people. Just left an official behind. It's the one who took Zhu Kaishan's filial piety money. Nearby guests, inns, and shops all quietly closed their doors after gunshots started. Out of sight is purity. They can't see anything, and these things have nothing to do with them. Lin Fong looked at the official who deliberately stayed behind and nodded, saying, Third brother, shovel the engineering soldiers to me. He needs to practice his courage. The official saw that all the people he brought were dead, and was so scared that he knelt on the ground and couldn't help but plead. Unfortunately, it was of no use. Lin Fong started cutting and shed blood all over the ground. Lin Fong still had the mood to dodge, watching blood spray on the snow. Lin Fong shot arrows and killed people in front of him. Seeing someone die in his own hands was just a surge in his heart. Now that he has truly seen blood, Lin Fong is surprisingly calm. There is no feeling of fear. All right, the people are killed, let's go. Lin Fong said that while they had taken out these ignorant people, he Laosi should have already hired good carriages and horses. They just need to leave directly. Money can connect with the gods. Lin Fong and his team had already figured out a way out. After killing someone, leave immediately. Everyone is a prisoner, and there is no shortage of this life in their hands. But I don't know if it's an illusion. After Lin Fong killed the official, he always felt like there was a pair of glowing eyes staring at him in the dark. Lin Fong turned his head to look, but there was nothing. In Lin Fong, Zhu Kaishan and others skillfully searched through the bodies of these people and found some divine and Taoist things. However, without careful examination, they turned around and left here. Not long after they left. The owner of the inn appeared here. He pushed a car and placed all the bodies on it, looking sad. Hey, it's all said that the people don't fight against the officials. These people just don't listen. The boss took two puffs of dry tobacco leaves and looked at the official who couldn't close his eyes. He reached out to wipe the person's eyeballs. Who knew that this person's eyelids seemed to be cast iron, and under their fingers, they remained motionless. After a moment, blood and tears still flowed down. Hey! Seeing this scene, the innkeeper's expression became even more sorrowful. He placed the rest of the corpses on the cart and pushed them away, leaving only this body behind. It was left here and left unattended. The innkeeper acted in such a way that everyone else noticed. They didn't say a word about it. No one paid attention to the body lying on the street. Only the shopkeeper, who had heard of this, took a snuff bottle and took a puff under his nose, shuddered and said, what a disaster. This young man has tampered with this yellow-skinned heart and lung tube. It depends on whether this young man is a fierce dragon crossing the river, or whether the yellow-skinned demon is one foot taller. After speaking, the shopkeeper continued to smoke, squinting his eyes and speaking no more. Outside the buffalo trench. On the donkey cart. He lousy roared happily, singing the beautiful songs he had learned in some unknown kiln, without any signs of weakness after a fever. Lin Fong saw blood for the first time and burned his clothes with blood. He sat in the car, looking at the objects in his hand. He clearly felt that there was something more in the eyes of the men around him who were looking at him. In the past, the way these people looked at him was full of respect from life.saving benefactors. Now I admire it. It is admiration and recognition for heroes. Lin Fong knew that his plan to infiltrate this group of people had been successful. 
These people were all heroes who followed Zhu Kaishan, and without showing their skills, they really couldn't integrate into them. In the future, he can also guide these people. This can also be considered as his complete integration into the small group. However, at this moment, Lin Fong couldn't afford to enjoy the admiring gaze of those around him. He has a booklet in his hand. This booklet was obtained from the official's body. Looking at this booklet, Lin Fong was very interested. There are only two people in this group who can read. One is Zhu Kaishan, and the other is Lin Fong. However, Zhu Kaishan only knows a few commonly used characters, and Lin Fong is different. Lin Fong knows both traditional and simplified Chinese characters, and he can tell that this book is a secret technique. Secret Technique Manuscript The spells inside are mostly derived from the teachings of Luo and its variants. Just because it's a handwritten revised version, the secret techniques inside are obviously one hammer in the east and one hammer in the west. Not systematic. Luo Jiao, later discovered as the White Lotus sect, has been a sect that has been passionate about rebellion for thousands of years. The White Lotus sect has undergone a transformation from ancient times to the present, and it is unknown how many branches it has developed. Even among the members of this boxing troupe, there is a shadow of the White Lotus sect. This secret technique is the good thing that the official specially exchanged. Lin Fong still doesn't know that there is a cause and effect on this official. This official indeed sold the lives of his entire family and made a deal with Huang Pizzi for the sake of his future but the human heart lacks the snake to swallow the elephant. After a few years of eating and dressing warmly, people's minds will increase. Once life is good, this person no longer wants to repay debts. Why does he think he should continue to enjoy his little life? Why should he give Huang Pizzi a chance to resist? As soon as he thought about it, he regretted how he had agreed to Huang Pizzi's terms. In addition to regret, this official understood the crooked idea. He took advantage of his position and brought himself this thing, wanting to learn two secret techniques and deal with this yellow skin. Who knew it wasn't hot yet, so I gave it to someone else. What Lin Fong is currently reading is this secret technique. Upon hearing this news for the first time, he perked up his spirits. After all, this was the first time he had obtained a secret technique that was completely absent in modern times. The Five Ghost Nightmare Town Talisman told Lin Fong that there are really spells in this world. This book tells him that spells are something he can practice. He opened the booklet and saw the first spell, his face slightly black. The first technique is the animal-making technique of Ta Jiao. Lin Fong glanced at it and tore it off. Bad luck. This thing is a craft of picking, cutting, and reselling children. Lin Fong felt dirty at a glance. This spell, Lin Fong doesn't learn it. His gaze fell and he turned to the second spell. Lin Fong glanced at this second technique, which began to have some meaning. This is also a fast-track method of crooked ways, called the three ghosts raising a sedan chair. Three ghosts lifting the sedan chair. This technique is quite interesting. It's just that this technique doesn't require Taoist practice, at the very least it requires a mouthful of human essence and blood if a person's destiny is not strong, this technique will also cause them to lose their life, wealth, or die recklessly well, if I practice Fu Long Quan and then practice these three ghosts lifting sedan chairs, wouldn't it be like forming a closed loop, producing and selling it myself? I can't practice this technique without completing it. Otherwise, give it a try to get started. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 New Arrival and Encountering Ghost Houses You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 New Arrival and Encountering Ghost Houses Lin Fong carefully pondered over these three ghosts lifting the sedan chair. These three ghosts are talking about the blessings, wealth, and longevity on people. Rich Ghost, Lu Ghost, Show Ghost. The more prosperous and prosperous a person's destiny is, the stronger the little ghost they cultivate. The three ghosts lifted the sedan chair, 
and this sedan chair was carried by its owner himself. If the practitioner's destiny is strong enough, the three ghosts lifting the sedan chair will consume their essence and blood. If one's destiny is not enough, it will consume the three talents of this person's fortune, wealth, and longevity. Short Lifespan Poverty Damn it! The three ghosts lift the sedan chair, the person is alive, the three ghosts carry the young person away, and when the person dies, the three ghosts will devour the Ean soul and eat the person. Lin Fong looked at it and was so happy that he slapped his thigh. Isn't this unfortunate? He may not be hard in other parts of his body, but one thing is, he must be very hard. It's just the eight characters. Lin Feng's father is a big businessman, and when he reaches a certain level of business, even if he is not superstitious, he should still be extremely talkative. It is commonly known as, respecting ghosts and gods while keeping a distance. I know, but it's not necessary. Lin Feng was born, and his father invited someone to come and approve his fate, saying that Lin Feng's life is a precious person's destiny. More importantly, he doesn't match the boss's destiny, water and fire are incompatible, staying together will lead to the Xuanwu Gate incident. Therefore, his father established a foundation and sent Lin Feng out early. He still doesn't believe it. His destiny as a noble person in Tiani is not enough to suppress these little three ghosts. Lin Feng thought of this and looked at the third secret technique. Seeing this third secret technique, Lin Feng neither tore it apart nor had any intention of practicing it. This last secret technique is a bit too wicked. The last secret technique is called, Negative Divine Technique. This is a spell similar to inviting a god to ascend. However, this spell does not invite a righteous god. Not a serious Taoist, without the rank of a Taoist official, Lin Feng just wants to invite the gods, but he can't come down. This negative magic can only invite evil spirits and ghosts. As the saying goes, it is easy to invite the gods but difficult to send them away. If we really invite this evil spirit, it won't be able to be sent away at all. It will stay on the person who bears the divine spell. Whether this person is alive or dead depends on the meaning of ghosts and gods. Lin Feng looked at this spell and with a strange expression, sent it aside. This spell can be practiced without practice. Lin Feng learned these spells to make himself better and stronger, not to commit suicide. Besides, most people don't get the rank of a Taoist official, and Lin Feng wants this thing easily. The simplest way is to find connections and become a Taoist in a Taoist temple. These days, Taoist priests also need to solicit sponsorships. As long as the money is in place, a Taoist official's position is not difficult to obtain. There are not many true hermits left. Lin Feng's task of giving himself a certain Taoist temple is really not troublesome. I just don't know if the rank of a Taoist official in the real world here is useful. If it's useless, it's not impossible to go to the Ice City. At this time, Bingcheng, like Feng Tian Prefecture, was a famous bustling area outside the pass. There, Mao Zi, the court, explorers, Taoists, leaders of evil sects, the Southern Manchurian Railway, the five immortals outside the pass, whether they are humans or ghosts, whether they are true or evil. They are all entrenched there, waiting for the opportunity. As long as the money is in place, Lin Feng still doesn't believe that he can't find a serious Taoist outside the vast pass. Having found a legitimate Taoist, Lin Feng does not believe that these Taoists do not have the opportunity to practice Taoism. Thinking of this, Lin Feng carefully read the cultivation method of the three ghosts lifting the sedan chair. After reading this spell, he found that the casting objects required for these three ghosts to lift the sedan chair were really too user-friendly. At the beginning, the three ghosts were conceived, without even using paper or scissors, just crossing your knees to settle down. Since that's the case, Lin Feng sat cross-legged on the donkey cart, trying to settle down. He didn't know that entering meditation required burning incense and calming down, with someone to protect the Dharma. Lin Feng only knows that it doesn't seem to be very difficult to settle down. 
Night falls. On the deserted street of Buffalo Gully, it was desolate and desolate. The person who owed Huang Pizzi a life is still lying on the ground, with wide eyes open and unable to close their eyes. I don't know when, in this small town of Buffalo Gully, countless cries suddenly rang out. Upon closer inspection, it seemed like the sound of a cat barking and pounding. Upon hearing this sound, those who had not yet fallen asleep quietly buried their faces under the covers. A disaster has come. After a while, these sounds disappeared without a trace. The old shopkeeper of the inn sat behind his own counter, smoking dry cigarettes one by one, and said with a hint of melancholy, Oh, it's a pity that we have a whole family. Unfortunately, what does this family mean? Soon, someone will know. The next day, a strange event occurred in Yuanbao town, not far from the wild cow gully. This official family of nine has all hung themselves in their own homes. Just hanging people of all ages and genders is enough. Strangely, across from the nine people hanging themselves, nine yellow-skinned individuals of all sizes were also hanging in unison, their green eyes making them look terrifying. The official family has died, and the matter has not been resolved yet. On the third day, while sleeping at night, this close relative who was related to an official heard someone crying outside. It's like morning. These people hid under blankets, trembling and enduring the night. During the day, they went out to watch and all the chickens raised at home were eaten clean. This is still considered one of the lucky ones. Some people with bad luck have exchanged lives with Huang Pizzi, even their young and old friends. In a state of panic, the remaining people gritted their teeth and gathered all the money to help the fairy. The fairy glanced and said it was okay. They are all relatives of your family and owe Huang Daxian's life. Now that my life is over, Huang Daxian has collected it. This matter has nothing to do with you. You can rest assured. After speaking, the fairy went back and ignored this matter. Everyone was very uneasy, but who knew that this time, what the fairy said was really good. This matter really comes to an end. These yellow-skinned people also abide by the rules. After taking the lives of these people, these yellow-skinned people will also go find the right people. This matter will be postponed for the time being. Five days later, Ice City. Although Bingqing was not as famous as Feng Tian at this time, it could still be considered a populous city. Lin Feng and his brothers entered the ice city and saw that it was not as bustling as it would be in the future. But as you can see, the number of people in ice city is already quite high. Many Shandong and Rihi people who have ventured into the Kanto region have gathered here, forming a new ecology. Lin Feng and his group hid their weapons on the donkey cart and entered the city in a grand manner. The people who entered this city with them are all refugees who have ventured into the Kanto region. However, compared to these refugees, whether it's Lin Feng or Zhu Kaishan, whether it's He Laosi or the group of brothers who follow them, they don't look like refugees, even if their faces are tightly covered. From the way they walk, these few people don't seem like hungry men. The gatekeeper glanced at them twice, and under the guidance of Zhu Kaishan's money, they didn't even glance at Zhu Kaishan, so they called them in. Lin Feng took another look at the city wall. Above the wall, there was a reward order from Zhu Kaishan and He Laosi. Unfortunately, the bounty order is a bounty order, no one will catch it, and the bounty order posted all over the world is useless. As soon as I entered the city gate, I saw someone standing in the distance recruiting workers, whether it was a shipyard or a railway. At this time, it was time for people. These people who had crossed the Kanto region had a meal to eat when they arrived at this place. Finally arrived at the ice city. Lin Feng sat on the donkey cart and breathed a sigh of relief. Coming here, according to Lin Feng's plan, we need to find a place to settle down. However, Lin Feng is not in a hurry about this matter. It's not even noon yet, Lin Feng asked He Laosi to pull the car and walk on the street, heading towards the neighborhood, which can also be considered to appreciate the local customs and traditions. Ice City is home to the Imperial Army, as well as railways and shipyards. 
It is not a place of poverty for the people, but more importantly, the black soil here. There is still a large amount of uncultivated black soil here. Lin Fong sat on a donkey cart, observing the first big city he had seen since the end of the Qing dynasty. The ecology here did not surprise Lin Fong, and the wealth gap was astonishing. Here, you can occasionally see fur and fur caravans walking on the streets wearing mink coats with arrogant expressions, which people take for granted. A roadside beggar dressed in rags and a wealthy young master dressed in luxurious attire, the young lady walked on a road covered in heavy snow, and a few steps would reveal a road collapse. This is outside the pass, and people who are not fully clothed are unlikely to survive until the next day. From here, heading towards the city center, one can see that even in the city center, there are still many poor people, with vegetable-like faces and thin like firewood. Lin Fong strung the door for a while, and inside his sleeve, three small paper figures fell to the ground, quickly transforming into shadows and disappearing to the ground. This is the three ghosts lifting the sedan chair that Lin Fong practiced. The three ghosts raising the sedan chair is an extremely eerie and magical technique. The paper figures created by this can transform into shadows, hide in human shadows, or act as human ears and eyes to listen. It can also be used as an assassination technique, cutting the enemy's neck off guard. In just a few days, Lin Fong lifted the sedan chair of these three ghosts and refined them to the level of Xiao Cheng. The wealthier a person's destiny, the faster they will practice this kind of magic. After walking all the way, Lin Fong and others suddenly stopped in front of a mansion. On this street, it can all be considered as a small wealthy family. This street is neat and clean, and Lin Fong likes it very much. Upon hearing the message from the three ghosts, Lin Fong glanced at the house and gestured for He Laosi to knock on the door. The Haunted House Lin Fong rubbed his hands on the donkey cart and muttered to himself. He didn't expect that the world really had some meaning. In this ice city, as soon as he arrived, he saw the legendary Lu Ban technique. He suddenly became very interested in this house. Lu Ban's technique harms people. I didn't expect to see such an interesting thing as soon as I arrived. After today, two chapters of updates will be released directly in the early morning, end of this chapter.